Hi everybody, I am Moody Boo and I am back with another thing. It's not really a review. It's just a fun thing, I guess. Fun for me, hopefully for you. I don't know. Anyway, oh my. So just a little preface to the video. I parted my hair on this side. I have never done that in 30 years part on this side and here's why I have a Lily Munster gray white streak that is right here as you can see can you see it yeah great huh well I usually get that taken care of a couple times a year and I was due to go back oh you know now um, to my hair guru and have her get rid of this shit right before we go to Hawaii. So I usually get my hair colored at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, um, because I have this weird gray, white, I call it a Lily Munster stress streak right here. Not center, no, it's off to the side, as you can see. My hair on this side, it's just a nice, even spattering of gray. On this side, not so much. So, anyway, since who knows when I'm going to get to see my hair guru again, I am going to embrace um, my flaws in my hair and just... Let her be sick, because I've always hated it, and I've always hidden it. Always hidden it, as best I could. You know, it's not always that easy when it's this gray, and my hair is normally quite dark. Um, so, but I decided I'm going to let my freak streak fly. So, um, I decided just to let it go ahead and show... Don't know how I feel about it, but I'm not going to hair shame myself anymore. So anyway, this video is just, I got the idea to do this video when I started that Show Me Your Spritz perfume tag. Um, <clears throat> the question I'm stuck on Band-Aid, I had a lot of fun doing, uh, where I talked about my favorite band, Pretty Reckless, and if I could create a perfume for them, what would it be called? I named it Hellbound. Um, what would the notes be, the dominant notes be in it? I put, uh, I think it was civet, rum, and something else. Anyway, so I had fun with that. And so I thought it would be fun to do a whole video on something similar. Um, so fun for me. I don't know what it's going to be like for you guys. but And I almost thought about doing this as a tag. Um, because there's so many different varieties that you could do, but there's a lot of tags going around out there, so I decided not to. Anyway, this one, if I could perfume um, my top 10 super heroines, um, fictitious heroines, what perfume would I choose for them? I'm not creating a perfume this time. I am... Um, figuring out what perfume would suit them best. Now the criteria for this was, <laughs> um, the criteria for this was, um, I thought of at least one note, if not two notes that I wanted to be dominant in the perfume. I looked up perfumes under those, with those notes as the dominant notes, and then looked through those perfumes. Now I wanted to make sure it was a per perfume that I had tried or owned, because, you know, it didn't make sense just to randomly pick some wild perfume so I wanted it to be something that I knew about but one of these is a perfume I've never tried never heard of or anything I went off the notes because I chose certain notes that I wanted to be present uh, for this heroine's perfume and when I saw the name I was like holy shit balls Batman perfection so anyway get started. I know I'm all excited. <laughs> ah! So the first heroine that I chose, um, fictitious heroine, is Wonder Woman. I know. 
not very imaginative, but I've always loved Wonder Woman ever since, um, <clears throat> oh, who's that hot babe that my husband always drills over? Linda Hemp, Lin Linda, Linda Carter, her Wonder Woman. That was the curviest, balmiest Wonder Woman I ever saw. Anyway, oh, my husband loves her. <laughs> so kind of in honor of him, I chose Wonder Woman. Now, in the original Wonder Woman, she was um, sculpted from clay by Zeus and then brought to life. Um, there was more to it than that, but that's the gist of it. So I wanted to make sure this perfume had clay in it, um, dominantly in it, if possible. And there's not that many with a dominant clay note in there, I have to say. Um, but I did find one that I thought would be really good for Wonder Woman to have as a perfume. And that's, and I'll insert pictures too. Um, that's Imaginary Authors, Memoirs of a Trespasser. It's vanilla and there's some woody notes in there and a little bit of benzoin and clay. So I figured that would be a very good one for her because there's definitely some sweetness in there. But there's a little bite to Memoirs of a Trespasser there's a little little heat to it and so I figured that would be great for Wonder Woman and then Memoirs of a Tw Trespasser um, I thought that was a really good title for a perfume she would wear because ever since she left the island and joined the world uh, the island of Amazons and joined the humans she's always kind of been a, a trespasser an unknown trespasser but still not really one of us and I love Memoirs of a Trespasser. Um, I think I still have, yes, I still have my bottle. I don't wear it often um, because I have so many in that same vein, but I do love it and performance on it is really good. So um, yeah, I chose for Wonder Woman, Imaginary Authors, Memoirs of a Trespasser. All right, next heroine. Now, my next heroine, and by the way, don't judge. I am not about any judgy people watching this giving me a bunch of shit. These are my heroines, my personal heroines, fictitious heroines, for what the fuck ever reason I so decided they were my, my favorites. But they don't have to be yours, they're mine. So the next one is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Love her. Um, I loved the movie version of it Oh, I just lost Christy Swanson, I believe, played Buffy the, the Vampire Slayer in the original movie. And then Sarah Jessica Geller played Buffy in the series, which I was devoted, devoted to. So um, anyway, yep, love her. Will she come back as an old lady? That'd be awesome. Anyway, I chose Amouage Fate for Woman. I wanted something with some heat to it and some leather because she always wore leather and yet some softness at the same time but unisex because ever since she stopped being a cheerleader and started becoming a vampire slayer she wasn't all about that girly shit most of the time so <clears throat> anyway fate uh, for women by homage is incense and cinnamon and benzoin and there's some other spices but and peppers and leather and patchouli, but then there's some softness. There's some florals in there and a little bit of fruits and just enough to soften the edges a little bit and uh, make it to where I think Buffy the Vampire Slayer would love wearing it and Fate Woman. The performance is crazy. And since she would be out all night killing vampires, she doesn't have time to reapply. So she'd need a beast mode kind of perfume, and Amouage Fate is it. All right, next heroine. My next heroine I have absolutely adored for decades. Um, there's no WWJD for me, what would Jesus do? It was always WWED, what would Ellen do? As in Ellen Ripley from the Aliens series. Man! That bitch is badass and the baddest of the asses.
you know what I mean. Um, anyway, I wanted a perfume that was dark because she's always in dark places. And I wanted something that she would wear on her time off of not hunting aliens. And though you don't get a, a real glimpse at to what her <clears throat> downtime looks like much, you do kind of get an idea of it because she has so many nightmares. Um, she has severe insomnia. She's got a lot of psych issues. Well, I picture that if it's possible to smoke in space, she, she might have a cigarette and she'd definitely be a drinker. That'd probably be the only way she could go to sleep and keep those aliens out of her head is by having some booze. So <clears throat> that is what, and then, and then also that cycle of having booze at night to go to sleep and then coffee in the morning to wake up. So I wanted coffee in there as well. So I chose uh, Sheehan or Sensei by Piotra Zarnecki. And especially the, the Sensei part, what it used to be called, because she is kind of my Sensei. I'm not even kidding, I do. What would Ellen do? I think about that sometimes when I'm in a situation where I think, hmm, I'm not sure what I should be doing, and if I make the wrong choice, it won't be good for someone. So what would Ellen do? <laughs> and I love Sigourney Weaver too. So anyway, Sheehan is boozy notes and tobacco and coffee and pepper, and there's labdanum and incense and amber and musk, and I definitely wanted musk in there because in space and the atmosphere, the whole aliens universe I think showering is kind of a commodity. I don't think there'd be a lot of water available to have a lot of long, hot showers. So you start smelling a little musky, I would think, after a while. But anyway, and I have that perfume and I adore it. And I could totally see uh, Ellen Ripley wearing it. All right, next heroine. So my next heroine is Sarah Connor from the Terminator series. And the Sarah Connor that I'm perfuming today is the one from the latest Terminator, the grizzled, cynical bitch of a Sarah Connor. If you haven't seen the new Terminator, you should. It's really good. If you're a fan of the first two, that is. So um, third one, yeah, not my favorite, but and was there a fourth? Is this the fifth one? I think it is. But anyway, I only really liked one and two. And then this one, because Sarah Connor is back. And she's badass, too. Um, anyway, she already admits in the movie, I won't give away any spoilers, because it is a new movie, but she admits that she drinks a lot. So I knew that had to be in there. I could picture her smoking a little bit. Um, I pictured her kind of a junk food junkie for some reason that... Oh, I know why, because um, I don't want to say too much, but she loves potato chips in this latest movie. So I kind of knew she was a junk food junkie. So I wanted something like that in there. So I made sure chocolate was in there. Um, and then musk, because I kind of had a feeling showering again would not be a high priority when you're killing Terminators. So she'd probably be a little ripe on occasion. So that led me to one of my favorite boozy perfumes and that's by Opus Oil's Mojo. Anyway, Opus Oil's Mojo, it's got some tobacco in there and I do picture her potentially smoking a little something something on occasion, whether that be tobacco or something greener. Um, and it's got boozy notes and honey and that honey gives it just a, a, adds a little sweetness to the tobacco. It's almost like a honeyed tobacco. Honey isn't um, a note that really stands out on its own. And um, some chocolate and some musk and there's vanilla. And in the deep dry down, it says there's florals, but I've never really gotten florals with Mojo. I believe they're there, but I've never really smelled them. And then some oak moss. And this is a very 
Um, I think a lot of women would think Mojo is too masculine to wear. I adore it. But <clears throat> that's one of the reasons, and it's super affordable. And she wouldn't be able to afford a real expensive perfume. And uh, anyway, she would want something unisex, I think. I think she, actually, I think she would wear a men's perfume, to be really honest with you. I don't think she'd go by any labels. It'd be something she likes. She'd just walk in the store. One of the first ones that she smelled, she liked. She'd buy it, she'd leave. There'd be no big fanfare about it at all, and no big time spent on it at all either. So anyway, that's Sarah Connor Mojo by Opus Oils. Next heroine. Helps if I turn on the lights. Shit. So anyway, the next one on my list is Celine, the Death Dealer from the Underworld series. Love her. Kate Beckinsale plays her in the movies, and my husband and I both agree she is like one of the prettiest women I've ever seen. Um, or him. Um, anyway, uh, if you don't she's a vampire that her job as a death dealer is to kill the lichen or the werewolves. So the fragrance that I chose for Celine is uh, Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather Intense. Now I wanted leather in there because she's always wearing leather even though who knows it could be rubber or something I don't know. It looks really shiny to be leather. It might be patent leather. But anyway I'm saying it's leather. And I wanted some fur notes in there, some some animalic notes in there too, because she does fight uh, lycanthrope. So she's probably always gonna be smelling, you know, and, and have that on her anyway of some kind of a musky animalic kind of a wet dog smell. And then it's got some divana and some raspberry and woody notes and amber and saffron and alibinum. And um, in it, it's very similar to me to the regular Tuscan leather. Um, I'm not sure what the intense part is, but I actually like the intense version better than the regular Tuscan leather. Don't come at me, bro. That's my opinion. My nose. That's just what I'm saying. So um, anyway, so that's why I wanted her to have to wear Tuscan leather intense is because of those heavy leather and animalic notes. But yet there's still a little bit of softness in there. It's not, it's not too bitey and too animalic. So it's good stuff and it really performs well for me. I only have a little sample and I don't have much of that left, honestly. But, and I think Celine, because she should be one of the elders. Um, in fact, you know, if you've watched all of the movies, she ends up being one of the elders at the very end. And so, um, I feel like, because she's so powerful, that she wouldn't want a girly, frilly kind of perfume anyway. She would want something more unisex or more masculine. In my opinion. All right, next heroine. So my next fictitious heroine is Katniss Everdeen from the um, Hunger Games. God, I drew a blank. <laughs> uh, the Hunger Games series. I really liked her. So I wanted some white florals in there because if you remember, um, was it Prue? Rue. When Rue died, she put those white flowers, I think they were white around her and everything, so I wanted, anyway, some heavy florals and white florals in there. And um, I wanted honey in there because of the tracker jacker bees that damn near killed her, but also saved her life. Um, so I wanted some honey in there as well. So for Katniss Everdeen, I picked uh, Perfumes de Sida, um, Melody de la Mora. because <clears throat> I wanted those white florals and the honey. This also has some musk in it, which I liked the fact that that was in there as well, um, because again, showering would be a luxury, you know, and also all the musk from the woods. She's always out in the woods and she hunts. There's also a little fruits and woods in the dry den, which I thought was really appropriate for a Katniss Everdeen kind of a, a perfume. 
So, um, and <clears throat> she is one that is a reluctant hero. She would prefer to just be a mom, a wife, have a home, not be some great war icon, some um, glimmer of hope in the darkness. That is never what she had ever wanted. She only did what she did to save her little sister's life. That was it. And everything else was consequential. So that's why I wanted something softer and more floral because it's not necessarily who she was during the Hunger Games that I was trying to perfume. It's who she was after the hun Hunger Games that I wanted to perfume. So anyway, yeah, that's uh, Ducida Melody de l'Amour. Next heroine. So my next heroine is Galadriel from Lord of the Rings. Um, I love Kate Blanchett and she played her so perfectly. So I wanted a perfume with a lot of natural element, elements in it, you know, fruity, floral. But I also wanted some edges in there too, because if you ever saw her go full elven witch on somebody, holy shit. You don't want to fuck with her, that's for damn sure. So I didn't want it all soft edges and sweet and all of that. I, I wanted some edge to it. So I came up with, and I also love the name of this. I, that's why I chose this one now. So I probably haven't smelled this perfume in like five years. Um, I looked for my sample and I couldn't find it. I think I used it up. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going off of memory. I chose Luna by Kemi Blending Magic. So yes, part of it was the name. But again, I was looking up perfumes with the notes that I wanted to be in there. And then looking at those lists of perfumes to see which ones that I knew um, or I had tried or that I owned. Um, and then kind of mixing that with the name to come up with the best perfume I could for this list. So Luna by Kemi is mango and there's some leather in there and that was part of the edge I wanted and some berries and iris and other fruits and some pepper and musk and incense and vanilla and amber and there's some green notes in there and some other fruits and florals and woods. So it's a very fruity, floral, woody fragrance with some spice and leather to give it a little bit of edge. But I honestly don't get, as I recall, the the woods or the ambers or anything like that until it dries down quite a bit. But the leather you do get, it's a fruity leather. Um, not like Tuscan leather. Everybody compares any fruity leather to Tuscan leather by Tom Ford. I didn't find this to be a Tuscan leather clone at all. Gorgeous stuff. And I love the name Luna by Kimmy Blending Magic. It was perfect for Galadriel, in my opinion. And I spent a lot of time figuring out what notes I wanted for each heroine, um, what notes I wanted to be in the perfume, and um, looking up these perfumes. I spent a lot of time doing this. And this is only going to be a, uh, the first one. I'm also doing this uh, for my top 10 fictional heroes, and then for my top 10 fictional couples. So, um, you know, just to kill time. <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, Kemi, Blending Magic, Luna, beautiful. I don't remember it lasting very long, though. I don't remember the performance being that great on it, but I could be wrong. I don't play the brain games that I should, so who knows if that's accurate. And they always reformulate, so it could perform differently either way. All right, next heroine. My next heroine is Storm from the X-Men series. Halle Berry played Storm. She's, God, she's another one that like almost makes my eyes bleed because she's so pretty. So this one was really difficult to do. I probably should have picked a different heroine because I'm not as happy with this choice as um, some of the others. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted ozonic notes in there. I wanted um, some fire notes, some heat in there for her thunder lightning 
kind of a, a, a power that she has over weather. But when I looked at those perfumes, I had heard of none of them or had smelled none of them. And none of them just really tripped my trigger. So <clears throat> I started thinking about it differently. Instead of a perfume that represents her at her most aggressive, um, full storm power, um, I decided to perfume her when she's off, when she's not having to, you know, make the tornadoes and the lightning and all of that. So I started thinking, what would she like? Well, she'd probably kind of like the opposite <clears throat> of what her powers represent. You know, sunshine and lightness and sweetness and, you know, just something really uplifting. So I decided instead of going with ozonic notes, go with solar notes. And <clears throat> I wanted um, it to be um, sweet and fruity because the sun, you know, makes the trees grow, makes the fruit ripen. And so I thought, well, that's kind of on the opposite scale of um, what she does when she's full storm mode. So I chose uh, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Sun. And it's got citrus and apple and, and solar notes and coconut and some florals and wood notes and musk and ambergris. <clears throat> and <clears throat> um, it's very light and uplifting. And I feel like because she has to go so dark with her powers, that she would want something to counterbalance that when she is on her downtime. So that's why I picked Light Blue Sun. And uh, next, heroin. So my next heroin is Otome Brown from the movie Ghost. Whoopi Goldberg played her in the movie. I loved her character. Loved her character. She's a a reluctant psychic medium and <clears throat> she's always scamming people um, making them think she had real powers until she finds out she has real powers and she's so good I love Whoopi um, anyway <clears throat> I thought <clears throat> she especially I'm, I'm perfuming her from after she finds out that she has got these powers. So um, I wanted to think about what would that be like? Well, it stressed her the fuck out, I'm here to tell you. So I figured she there'd have to be some chocolate in there. She'd need chocolate for comfort, probably some alcohol. Even though she was very religious, I still think she'd probably start drinking. So when I looked up booze and chocolate, going through the lists um, of perfumes, I found one I just recently got a sample of and I have almost bought a bottle. I'm really close to buying a bottle, um, but I haven't quite made it into the, I love it enough to pop for it. But anyway, it's by Bruno Fazzolori and it's Corpse Reviver. <laughs> of course. She's a medium. She sees dead people. It's perfect. And it's chocolate and booze and fruits and civet. And there's some blood orange. I think there's some spices in there and some green notes, you know, some some like fern notes and stuff in there. Um, but it was mostly the booze and the chocolate that I really was looking at for Otome Brown. So anyway, I I love the perfume. So I'm really close to buying a bottle of Corpse Reviver, but the anise, there's anise, blood orange, and civet in there, and it's a weird thing. It's a weird combination, and when it combines with the fruits, the chocolate, and the booze, it becomes a weirder thing. It almost does have a slight rot smell to it. Not quite decomp, because that would be horrible. 
and very off-putting. More like rotting fruit, along with the chocolate, the booze, um, and the green notes. So it's really interesting, really interesting. And it's a good price, so I'll probably end up with a bottle of it because I love shit like that. And with a name like Corpse Reviver, ha, huh, yeah, I may have to get a bottle. I'm talking myself into it as we speak. But anyway, I figured this would be a perfect perfume for Eau de May Brown, a medium from Ghost, a reluctant medium. So anyway, all right, last heroine. So my last heroine is one of my favorite heroines of all time, and that's Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. Watching her journey, her transition from innocent little wannabe warrior to the baddest bitch in the land was epic. And <clears throat> I don't use the word epic lightly. Whole Game of Thrones was epic. My mom, since we're all in lockdown, my mom has not seen any of the Game of Thrones. Didn't even really know anything about it because it's just not something she would know about. She doesn't have premium channels. Anyway, my mom, you know, everybody being on lockdown because of COVID, she's getting bored. She's 86 and she is gone doing something every day whether that's bridge or bingo or casinos or whatever, she's always on the move, so she's going nuts. So I decided to get her the entire series of Game of Thrones. And I warned her, it was very violent. I also warned her, don't get too attached to any one character because you just never know when they're gonna kick it. And uh, anyway, um, I'm so excited because I've already talked to her. She's seen four episodes and she's hooked. <laughs> All I had to say was dragons, mom, dragons. And she was like, bring it here, boo. So I Lysoled the shit out of it, Lysoled her porch, put it down, Lysoled more. And then we stood and talked about it from about 15 feet away for about five minutes. But that's life post-COVID, isn't it? I wanted a metal notes to represent, you know, the swords and daggers that she's used throughout her journey. Definitely some animalic notes to represent, you know, they're the house of the wolf and, you know, just the all the other characters that come in and out of her life and her world look like they smelled pretty animalic to me and they wore a lot of furs and things. So I wanted that to be there and I wanted leather in there because she wore a lot of leather when she transitioned from child to warrior goddess. Um, so when I was looking them up, I found a perfume with all three. The metal, the um, fur or animalic notes, and the leather. And then when I saw the name, I have not smelled this perfume. I've never heard of this perfume, but this had to be her perfume. And the perfume is by Filippo Sorcinelli. <laughs> and the name of it is, But Not Today. Right? Right? That's like perfect. That's what she tells the God of death. Not today. Oh my God. It was fate that I found this perfume for Arya Stark. Now I just need to get it to her. That's all. You know, that's probably going to be the tough part. But where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, I miss Game of Thrones. I don't know about all of you, but I miss Game of Thrones. I wish a spinoff had happened or they just started off start it up again and do more books or uh, just bring it back. I just yearn for it. All right. Well, that was my top 10 perfumes for my fictitious heroines if I was able to perfume them. So I know that was a really long title. I better figure out something a little shorter than that before I post this. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> again, y'all stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Peace.